Hi everyone, my name is Latasha Muhammad, and I hope you all are having a fine and wonderful and fantastic day today. I wanted to make this video because I believe it's important, and um, I believe that there are so many people, it's like a wave of health consciousness that's like... That's what I see. I see like a lot of people trying to be healthier and a lot of people trying to do things a little bit different um, in the way of achieving better health. So this video is probably going to be a controversial video, but that doesn't bother me. This video is about the effects of eating pork. Yes, people the effects of eating pork. So, um, I learned about pork, that pork was bad for you, um, when I was practicing um, a Muslim religion. And it's, you know, it, it's made as a joke in like movies and, and songs and stuff like that about Muslims not eating pork, but it's really not a joke. And it's, um, and it's actually a, a real thing and and that's where I learned it from I learned it when I was I was practicing Islam and so I took it a step further and I did my own research I went and I did my own research which is something that I strongly urge whoever's watching this to do like if somebody tells you something even if you get a diagnosis from a doctor, whatever the case may be, I, I just believe that we should stop taking information on face value and we should go and do our own research. We should go and do our own research. So I took it that step further. I took it that step further and I went and I did my own research and at the time I was in school so I had access to a science lab so uh, what I did was I went to a grocery store and I asked them if they would donate some raw pork meat for my experiment and they did and what I saw underneath the microscope was disgusting um, it is a high powered microscope and yeah, I, I saw worms in the pork meat, in the pork flesh, with my very own eyes, my own research. I saw what I was taught in Islam about pork to be 100% right and exact. So I'm here to share with you the information that I learned, okay? So let's get started. So many of you know that you've heard that pork is bad for you, but that's all you hear. That's all, that's all I hear anybody ever say, pork is bad for you, but why is pork bad for you? Why? How come? The flesh of the hog, pig, or swine is composed of a parasite, a worm that is microscopic to the naked eye. Microscopic meaning the, just by looking at the flesh you, you cannot see this parasite. In order to see this parasite you have to look at the flesh underneath a high powered microscope. The flesh of the pig contains worms, a parasite called Trichnella spiralis. People who are infested with this worm, with trichnae, are said to have trichnosis. So that's the reason why pork is bad for you. Pork is a big old mass of worms. And when you eat pig, when you eat bacon, when you eat sausage, when you eat pork chops, when you eat pig feet and chitlins and prosciutto, the finer grade of pork, right, you're basically eating a mouthful of worms.
microscopic worms that go into your digestive system, travel all throughout your bloodstream, and these worms just wreak havoc inside of your body. These, these worms, this parasite, this trichinella spiralis causes so many health conditions. It's I would I would bet anything I would say that probably more than 70 80 percent of America's health problems are caused by eating pork yes I will go that far to say that um, so um, like I said I did a research paper on it and so I'm about to read to you some of my findings here's my research paper um, I, I titled it, Pork, the Other White Meat, right? Seriously though. So, how does pork harm the body? How does pork harm the body? Let's talk about that. When humans, you, you, when humans eat this flesh called pork, no matter what grade, because you know how they have like grade USDA, grade A, or USDA, grade B, I don't know, I, I think there's a grade B, but the grade doesn't matter. That stamp of approval is like BS. When humans eat this flesh called pork, no matter what grade, the microscopic worms travel from our from our mouth into our stomachs and from our stomachs into the walls of our intestines the worms then multiply weaving their way into the muscles of our body from the muscles into the spinal cord and up to our soft gray tissue matter called brain when inside the body the worms are there to stay and cause sickness and illness. When inside the body, the eggs are laid and hatched. So when you eat pork, the pork worms lay eggs. They lay larvae. And inside the body, you're, you're the host. You, person eating the pig, you're the host. So being the host, you have plenty of nutrients in your body. You have blood. You're the perfect environment to breed. So when you eat this pig and they lay their, their, their larvae gets into your system and they lay their eggs, it's the perfect incubator. So when inside the body the eggs are laid and hatched, these larvae mature within five to seven days. As their life cycle is completed, they become insisted in the internal organs of the host. They become insisted, not insisted, but insisted, E-N-C-Y-S-T-E-D, insisted, inside of the body. When they die, if they do, they calcify and become tiny, hardened, chalk-like nodules. The brain of the host may also be affected severely, causing neurological problems. So these worms get into your system, they lay eggs, they hatch, and they become insisted, which, they be, they, which means they're like in a in a cyst. So like here, a cyst is like a protection. It's like encased, the eggs are encased in a cyst. So this is like the worm or the egg and it's like covered up with a cyst. And this is, <clears throat> this is actually um, what I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, underneath the microscope. I saw larvae encased in a, in a covering, a protective cover. And when they say you just have to cook your pork well, cook it well, that's a lie. It's a lie. 
because the cyst is is protection. It's protection and it's heat resistant for the larvae. So if you cook it, it doesn't matter. It has the the eggs, the worm has a protective cover on it. So um hey, if you like your pork, do it. I'm just the messenger. So <clears throat> Despite the fact that you are unable to notice them with the naked eye, pathologists have reported it is possible for almost a half million trichnae to be found lodged in each pound of muscle tissue of the host. Ew! Many of these creatures can be seen on x-ray after the larvae have formed cysts in the muscles. And this cyst can protect the worm for up to two years. Yes. They can be detected in the hands, the feet, the lungs, the neck, the shoulders, the brain. The female larvae is capable of laying up to 1,500 eggs per day. And by releasing them into the bloodstream, they burrow themselves into the individual fibers, into the individual muscle fibers within a few weeks time and we suffer from their presence for years to come. So, um, the female larvae, when the eggs are released into the bloodstream, the, the worms, they burrow, burrow themselves. They like dig into your muscle your heart muscle into the walls, the lining of, you know, your body, and that's where they have their home, and that's where they cause a lot of problems, and we'll get to a lot of the common illnesses that are caused by eating pork. <clears throat> Pretty disgusting, right? Check this out. It says, pathologists have reported while doing an autopsy when examining the muscle and organs of a pork eater that they found the worms still living and eating away at the corpse. Concerning the trichnae, which often invade the muscles of the heart, spinal cord, and brain, they cause a multitude of ailments in the form of organ and circulatory aggravations. I'm, a lot of people, I don't know, they just don't understand the danger of eating pork. Like, so, I mean, I hope I'm getting across in this video. Let me continue. <clears throat> when the worms invade the eyes of a pork eater, they turn the white parts red or dull brown. Heart failure, heart failure results from large numbers of larvae invading the arteries of the muscles of the heart. Farmers nor scientists have discovered a way to manufacture or breed a pig that does not contain the trichnae worm. It has not and cannot be done. <clears throat> if the breeders fed pigs strawberries and carrots all day long, the pig would still still contain trichnae spiralis. <clears throat> the, pig has been roaming, the pig has been roaming the earth for over 4,000 years. At that time, the hog's major purpose, other than eating filth, was for medicinal purposes. So years and years and years ago, the pig was, it wasn't for eating, it was for medicine. It was a medicine. That's why it's poison. The actual cellular structure of a pig is full of worms. These worms are generally called pork worms and are known by the medical profession as trichnae or trichnella spiralis. Researchers have proved that there are over 900 different types of trichnella spiralis found within the hog. So when you're eating this pig, Trichnella spiralis isn't just one worm. It's not just one worm. 
it's over 900 different kinds and and then some because of, of those 900 different kinds those different kinds are breeding are laying larvae are hatching eggs all within your body so the very blood of the hog every cell of the hog the actual flesh of the hog contains trichnilla spiralis the point I'm trying to establish here is that the pig does not contract trichnilla spiralis the pig is a big filthy nasty mass of worms and the funny thing about the pig is that the, the pig has a sewer line the pig has a sewage line because it is so poisonous and filthy so the pig has a, a hole and out of it oozes pus and when I was doing my research paper it hit me because when I was a kid you know I couldn't say what I didn't want to eat or what, so whatever, whatever. So I, I had to eat pig feet, like my grandma cooked pig feet. And I always would wonder when I was washing my hands after eating the pig feet, what there would always be stuff, like stuff, like stuck onto my fingers. Like I would have to literally aggressively pull like this gook off of my fingers. And now I know what it was. It was pig pus. So, I mean, the pig is just absolutely, completely disgusting. And I know they have the fancy commercials about pork where, you know, they're laying pork loin on a nice table and a nice family is sitting around it. And, you know, that's just for profit. They're not going to come out with commercials that say, hey, pork is bad for you. They're not because it's the nettle. It's all about money it's profit that's why there's liquor stores that's why there's selling cigarettes because they don't care about your health it's about money the nettle profit so this information like I said is for those who are searching for it if you're not searching for it and you you like your ham hocks and your ham sandwiches and you know your bacon and sausage in the morning do you do you? I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm the messenger and I'm trying to reach one. So if I reached you, I am so happy. And this video is also for, if you're, if you're looking to do something to better your health, there, there are so many other meats that you can eat besides pig. There are so many other different kinds. If you have to eat meat, try to eliminate that one. I mean, even if even if you did if you, even if you could cook pork to where the worm dies why would you want to eat it then you're then you're going to be eating dead and rotting pig flesh dead and rotting pig flesh on top of worm carcasses that's disgusting seriously i mean there's so many other wonderful and good things to eat mother nature provides everything and the pig, I mean, it was supposed to be a medicine a long time ago. And humans, somewhere down the line, started eating it. So, um, this video is getting kind of long, I know, but it's, it's an informative video. And I just want to read off some common illnesses that are caused by pig. Some common illnesses that are caused by eating pork. These are just to name a few, a very, 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 very few. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was informative and here's to your health. Knowledge is power. So now that you know, it's up to you to make the decision what's best for you. I mean, 
there are alternatives. There's turkey sausage and turkey bacon and you know there's so many other alternatives. Um, especially if you already have high blood pressure, if you already have heart disease and um, heart failure and if you've already had a stroke, if you already, if your health is already falling apart, yeah, definitely eliminate pork. So, but yeah, to each his own. I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day and thank you so much for watching. Have a great one. Bye.